Now we're dealing here with something from the bottom of the foot. Um, here is dense regular connective tissue, a big thick bundle of it. So this is tendon. And you can see these are fibroblasts and really thick collagen in between. So this is tendon. And um, the coming right off of the tendon is a spindle cell lesion. And it's ill-defined. And you can see it's growing right out. Here's the tendon coming along. And then here's the tumor cells that just kind of arise right out of the tendon and grow and form this nodule. It looks relatively blue compared to the pink of the background tendon. And the cells though are very bland and they're arranged in these broad sweeping fascicles. See, so look at all these, I'll get it stabilized here. All these spindle cells, they're all running in the same direction, kind of sweeping across the screen. They're parallel to each other. And the spindle cells, even though it's kind of cellular, each of the cells is divided from its neighbor, more or less, by strands of pink collagen. There's little collagen fibers in here. So these are fibroblasts or myofibroblasts. I use those terms. I lump those two together diagnostically um, uh, because uh, they often have kind of an overlapping feature, myofibroblasts and fibroblasts. So for the purposes of talking about lesions, I just say it's a fibroblastic or myofibroblastic lesion. They, I think of them as the same thing. Um, so in any case, though, this is an example of fibromatosis. Um, which is, it's got some similar features to what you'd see in uh, desmoid fibromatosis um, elsewhere in the soft tissue, but in plantar fibromatosis, it looks a little different. For one thing, it's much smaller. Uh, of course, it's going to be on the plantar surface of the foot arising out of the uh, tendon, and it tends to look more blue than desmoid fibromatosis because it's a lot more cellular usually. I feel like plantar fibromatosis tend to be pretty cellular, but even though it's cellular, the cells are divided from each other by collagen. So those broad sweeping fascicles is very characteristic. You will often find mitotic figures scattered in these. Do not be worried by that. That's a very common finding, particularly in plantar fibromatosis. Now, closely related to plantar fibromatosis is palmar fibromatosis, or Dupuytren's contracture, which arises in the tendons in the hands. But those are usually really tiny lesions. They sometimes you might find just you might find like just an area like this. Just a couple little fascicles, and that whole thing is all that there was to the lesion. Uh, but it's enough to pull on the tendon and make a trigger finger, so they go ahead and they, they may surgically treat that to release the trigger finger. So I find that it, plantar fibromatosis is much bigger, much more cellular, more blue appearing because there's more nuclei, often has some mitoses when you compare it uh, or contrast it with the, the palmar fibromatosis counterpart. And of course, desmoid fibromatosis in soft tissue also has broad sweeping fascicles, but it's much bigger and deeper. And is, is um, even though it's similar in appearance to plantar and palmar fibromatosis, really kind of a separate disease in the way that it behaves um, and so should be thought of se separately. But one thing that does, uh, that does need to be noted is that um, even though we don't usually need immunostains to recognize these tumors most of the time, um, classically what you should know is that there's nuclear expression of beta-catenin. So beta-catenin nuclear staining can be seen in desmoid fibromatoses and also in palmar and plantar fibromatoses. Now molecularly there's a difference in the way that this works and it's more complicated than we'll go into that the desmoid tumors though have actual genetic abnormalities either of the beta-catenin gene or of the APC gene which regulates beta-catenin whereas in palmar and plantar fibromatosis to my knowledge there's not an actual genetic abnormality that causes this but beta-catenin builds up through other mechanisms. Um, so in any case the outcome is the same that there's going to be beta-catenin staining in my personal practice, I don't find beta-catenin very useful usually because I think it's very dirty stain that's hard to interpret. It often stains the cytoplasm and it's only the nuclear staining that actually matters. So nuclear beta-catenin is the classic thing that's positive in fibromatosis. But like I said, I think in practice, um, the H&E morphologic features are much more important and beta-catenin can be really challenging to interpret for me at least. So that's palmar fibromatosis.